Tell us how mental toughness is developed through physical focus. Simple, like when you're in the gym, that's one of the hardest things but most rewarding thing. So if you go in the gym and you gotta push through reps, you gotta push through sets, you're building mental fortitude, your physical already didn't fail. After three sets in a workout, it is no longer physical. Now it's mental for the rest of your workout. The body is like, I'm done. But you keep pushing through your sets because upstairs you're telling yourself, man, I gotta finish, I gotta get through this, or I got vacation in two weeks. Whatever your driving factor is, it's all mental at that point. That's how you develop that mental fortitude through physical focus, because every day you're pushing past your physical limits and relying on your mental fortitude to get you through a workout. Welcome to Only the Greatest Podcast. If you're feeling stuck and unsure what to do next in your fitness journey, we might be what you're looking for. My name is Philip. I own and operate OTG Fitness, which is a private personal training gym on the south side of Houston in Webster. I do this podcast every week with my best friend, Daryl. We've been friends since third grade and working out together ever since. Also joining us today will be Sean. He's the one that makes this podcast not only sound great, but look good as well. Our goal here is to help Houston make its way up the ladder of health and fitness. So if you're in the Houston area and ready to become the greatest version of yourself, be sure to like and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Ishmael Sanderford is a personal trainer and online fitness coach that helps his clients build mental fitness through physical focus. His unique intra-imperium training approach helps people lift heavier, run faster, and hit harder. In today's conversation, we talk about how Ishmael developed his unique style of training, why he believes fitness is the true fountain of youth, developing a healthy relationship with failure, and how mental toughness is developed through physical focus. If you enjoyed this discussion and find value in it, please consider subscribing subscribing and sharing with anyone you know that should hear it. All right, man, be honest with me. I got two questions. Yes, sir. One, what is intra-imperium training? Mm -hmm. And two, how long do I have to do it until I look like you? <laughs> That's what I want to know. <laughs> My man. I'm trying um, to get down to the facts. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's get serious. Let's get to business here. <laughs> so um, intra-imperium is two Latin words that mean internal and then intra, intra is internal. Imperium means absolute power. So it's all about generating that within and then allowing it to show without. So um, that's my form of training, intra-imperium, mental fitness, building up mental fitness through physical focus. So through working out, through pushing yourself, through breaking barriers and limits in the gym, then mentally it translates. So now in life, you're breaking those same barriers when you reach certain points of failure. In life, you can reflect to when you met that failure in the gym and how you grew from it and how it made you stronger. So... Through that physical activity and exercise, we build the mental, hence intra and period. Man, I love that. How long ago did you kind of create this uh, philosophy of intra and period? Um, So I've been working out since I was eight um, years old. So from eight to probably by the time I was 12, you know, I was doing hundreds of push-ups, dips, and things of that nature. And I just seen how it translate. Um, and then also, like my brother, um, he has cerebral palsy. And I seen how fitness, eating right, exercise, allowed him to live past what the doctors predicted that he would live just off of fitness alone. So I seen how just fitness, it transformed the mind. Because once you transform your mind, your body will follow. So it kind of stuck with me. And then I was just looking up words like what kind of could fit. And then that's when I um, developed intra imperium. I was like, yeah, that's it right there. Yeah, man, I can vibe with all those things you're talking about. It's <clears throat> I feel like... Uh, your brand and our brand uh, have, have very similar values. And For that's sure. why when you hit me up about the podcast, I was like, man, I think it's, it's perfect, especially when you kind of told me that story. Yes, sir. You know, and I, I wanted to get into the details of all of those things. So sure. if you don't mind, let's kind of break it down a little bit and start with the physical part of, of the training, like how you, like what exactly, when it comes to intra-imperium, intra yes, sir. what exactly like from a physical standpoint kind of stuff are we doing because I remember I think I read on your um on your website it is you know running lifting strength power hit yes, 
all that kind of stuff. So if you don't mind, maybe we can we can break that down from top to bottom for sure, um, for sure. to get us started here. Definitely. So intraimperium training is almost like that. Would you say one size fits all, right? So my slogan is run with the runners, lift with the lifters, hit with the hitters. So no matter what environment we put you in, you will excel. So um, heavy calisthenics, um, weightlifting, strengthening, and conditioning, um, cardio is a, the perfect recipe of all of those combined to produce the actual physical specimen, but also your actual shape, shape. So wherever we throw you CrossFit, whatever we throw you in, you'll be able to excel. So it's a combination. We got body weight exercises. Yeah. We have weights yes, as sir. well. We got running. Yes, sir. This works for men and women? Men and women, yep. And then it gets you in your peak shape. You know what I mean? So it's almost like going into the lab, taking a little bit of calisthenics, you know what I mean? A couple of grams of a hit and you know, putting it all together to create that recipe of, of success. Do you do them all in the same day or do you separate them so out? So we separate them out. Um, certain things I call like core, the foundation thing. So calisthenics, that'll be done every day because that's foundational. Um, some type of hit or cardio will be done every day because that's foundational. And then like the weightlifting and things, you know, we interchange and alternate depending on the days. And that will depend on the client, and their goals, on, and stuff like exactly. that, Exactly. Right? Yes, sir. Is there a nutrition piece Absolutely, to this? absolutely. Oh. So um, eating is key. So, um, you know, we I have meal plans and things that I tailor based off of how, you know, the, whatever my customer, my customer or client wants, you know, I tailor that meal plan and keep it lean, you know what I mean, but solid, but also fun. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times meal plans, people want to be too strict, but then I realize that, you can't just strip away something because if you go back to eating, your body's going to respond in a way where it's going to go OD. It's going to go way overboard. So it's all about moderation. So putting that meal plan together is also, you know, a part of it. Yeah. So you try to help the client find a, a middle ground between sure. what they'll actually do and what's going to give them optimal results. Right. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. We've found that to be very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> is it, do you have any, like uh, what, what's your, what's your trick to helping clients find that? Um, I ask them what they enjoy. You know what I mean? What are, what are some of the things you enjoy? Let's start there first. Mm -hmm. um, once I see what they enjoy, um, some things you might have to take away, but the key is if you take something away, you got to replace it with something either optimal or similar to what they had or better. So some of the things I might take away, I'll replace it with something where they don't even feel a loss. You know what I mean? So um, And then from the things that we can keep, we keep those, and then we just spread it out from a moderation standpoint. And then I give them – the stuff that's going to get them right, get them right. You know what I mean? Then I add that in there um, in between what they already enjoy. And now they got a meal plan. It's not a struggle. It don't feel like I'm on a diet. It feel like I'm just eating how I, I normally eat with just a little extra. How long on average do you, do you feel like it takes someone to, to find that? Like when you're working with someone, they're struggling, right? And they all are kind of playing this back and forth game. About how long does it take to, to help someone dial in? Uh, I say two weeks. Two weeks? Wow, yeah, that's pretty fast. Yeah, two weeks. I mean, because... In two weeks, if we are locked in, we communicate heavy to see what works, what don't work. In two weeks, you'll be able to, one, that's how long it takes to just to see a little bit of results from your workout. Mm -hmm. And then, two, to build that habit to snap your mind into that, that state of, like, this is what I'm doing. So, two weeks hands-on communication, yeah, they'll be locked in. Yeah, that's good. To go. To, to go back to the workout piece, <clears throat> you know, a lot of people, because you, you, you mentioned finding what people like. Right. What I've noticed is... Within fitness, and non-fitness people don't realize this, the bodybuilders hate the crossfitters, the crossfitters hate the runners, yeah. the runners hate the bikers. Like, how, you know, what do you have, do you have thoughts on that? Like, why that is, what happens? I feel like, um, um, you know, what people, people fear what they don't understand, right? So true. So, a bodybuilder really doesn't have a full understanding of somebody that does calisthenics. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, nah, like, why would I do that? Or vice versa. Um, and then it's also about perception. Like, if I'm the man in bodybuilding, if you go to calisthenics, you're no longer the man. You got to start at the bottom and build your way up in that particular discipline. So that's another thing why people stray away. It's not even that they might not like it, but it's just like, I'm excelling over here. If I go over there, I got to start at the bottom. So it's just a matter of, you know, perception and understanding. Like, for instance, I, I've done bodybuilding competitions, but I also do calisthenics competitions. But the thing is, all of them actually help each other. You know what I mean? The running, the head, the crossfit, all of that can, can help translate into any of those avenues. But it's just a matter of understanding. 
You know what I mean? And that's where people get that fear from because they don't understand, like, why are they doing these type of pull-ups or why are you lifting the weight like that? So, Yeah, I think, um, you know, you, you two amazing things that you said, that people fear what they don't understand. That yeah. is so true. And then the other one that is probably in the particular question that I asked is probably more in this direction, which is they don't want to start over. <sighs> they don't want to start from the bottom. Yeah. You know, and so how, how, when you're talking to someone, how do you emphasize that it's so important to, to do all of them? What, what does that conversation look like? Um, so I just sit them down and I tell them, you know, in order to be in the best shape of your life, you have to implement all of these. And all of them translate to real life. You know what I'm saying? All of it translates to longevity. So I tell them in order to have longevity, because the weightlifter that just lifts weights may not have that longevity, muscles break down, right? But to combat that, lift some weights, but then do calisthenics. You know what I'm saying? Because at calisthenics, you can do that all the time, and it's not heavy on your on your joints. So now you take a little bit of the weights away, put a little calisthenics in, now you got longevity. Now you can lift like a bodybuilder, do the calisthenics, but 10 years from now, your bone's not aching. You know what I'm saying? You're not in bad shape. So they be like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So it's just about longevity. Helping them understand. Yeah. yeah. Can heavy. you define real quick uh, calisthenics for someone that doesn't know all what right, that is? So um, calisthenics is all body weight um, exercises, push-ups, pull-ups, dips, burpees, mm-hmm. lunges, everything without <clears throat> weight, but just your body weight is um, calisthenics. Okay, perfect. And you mentioned um, longevity. Yes. Sir. Very, it's, it's a kind of a, a big thing right now. People are talking about living longer, being stronger for longer. And we've mm-hmm. noticed um, at OTG, we do personal training, Definitely. you know, so we're working a lot of one-on-one with people kind of on what they can do, uh, what they want to do, their future goals. And a lot of times people's goals aren't to be the biggest. It's not, right. it's not to be the, str- it's to be the, the biggest that they can be or the strongest that they can be. But at the end of the day, that's not the main driver the main driver they want to live longer exactly. be healthier for longer exactly. right you know they want to play with their grandkids mm-hmm. when they're in their 60s 70s exactly right exactly. so can you speak on you know fitness being the fountain of youth yes sir. and why you feel that way kind of you know you're a little bit about your past that you've kind of told me a, a little bit about uh, why do you feel like fitness really is the fountain of youth all right, so um, like I said, growing up, my brother, he had cerebral palsy um, when he was born. So the doctors told my parents he wouldn't live to be past five and that he wouldn't be able to walk, he wouldn't be able to talk. Um, he would be almost like a vegetable state up until five, and then that would be it. But once they met my mentor, he was like, no, nah, we're going to take him off all the medicine. We're going to exercise him, give him good diet, and put him in a peaceful environment. He'll be fine. And growing up, seeing that, my brother lived to be 17, so – way past what the doctors predicted. He was able to walk some. He was able to talk some. He was able to have a better quality of life. And to me, that translated to, like, okay, I see that fitness extended my brother's life. Eating right extended my brother's life. Peace extended his life. And I translated that to, so every time I go work hard, I'm sipping from that fountain. I'm extending my quality of life. I'm putting myself in a position that 10 years from now, 20 years from now, that I'm going to be in in great shape in my quality of life. So I think people get that confused too. Like your quality of life is just how you live. You know what I'm saying? It's not about the the physique. It's not about none of that. It's about waking up, no aches and pains. Um, Being able to, like you say, play with your grandkids. Being able to move and be mobile without any restrictions, no sickness, no illness, the quality of life. So I realized that watching my brother's journey, that fitness is that one thing that can extend your quality of life. Yeah, I have a lot of questions, but I think the first one uh, that I'd like to dig a little bit deeper on is you, you mentioned peaceful environment. Yes, sir. I feel like when people think about fitness, they think about gym, hardcore, lift, run, yelling. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> yelling, yelling. The yeah, op- yeah. the opposite of peace. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. can you can you speak on why that peaceful environment is important and how you've seen it add to people's fitness life? For sure. Um, I was always taught um, out of all the things that men or women want in this world, peace is number one. So finding peace in whatever you do. Um, So in the gym, everybody that's working out, they find a sense of peace in the gym, and that's why they go to the gym. Now, you may have people with their headphones on. That's how they zone out and be in their peaceful state. Some people don't like some people you hear now, ah, pushing, but they're in a state of peace. They're doing what they love. 
they enjoy it, and then when they come out, they feel accomplished. So everybody in the gym for that hour, 30 minutes, 40 minutes that they're working out, they're actually in that state of peace. And then when you go home, like, you know, things I tell my clients, meditation, you know what I'm saying, just sitting and being still for a second to allow your success to sink in. You know what I mean? You made it through the day. You got a hell of a workout in. Now just reflect on that and let that sink in. And that peace is what actually allows your muscles to grow but allows your mind to grow. So that's like what my brother keeping the environment as peaceful as possible, you know what I mean? Allowing, working out, eating good, just everything, you know, as calm as possible so that the growth can take place. I think it's important to realize that some people's peace is different than others. Very true. And so just because I find peace in one thing doesn't mean that others will also. That's a fact. You know, and so... Why is that though? Do you do you feel like it's maybe the way people grew up? Like you're talking about your brother, right? Right, right? Because peace was seen as a certain way. Do you feel like maybe you view it as the same way? Yeah. So so peace has a lot to do with environment. How you grow up. It's almost like love, right? Everybody used the word love, but however you was taught to love, that's how you see love. You see what I'm saying? So however you found peace growing up. That's how you're going to find it as you go through your life. You're going to resonate with certain things because of your environment, your situation, how you grew up. So, yeah, peace is relative to those things. So, like, for everybody, it's going to be different. Yeah, for sure. Going back to your your brother, yes, right, sir. for example, and the types of things that he did during his life, maybe someone's listening to this and they can't do very much. Right, right, right. right. From exercise. And a lot of people I feel like are in that boat. They heard of like paralysis by analysis. Yeah. yeah. They feel like they can't. Right, right. Can, can you speak on the way that y'all approached his situation and right. finding what he can do? Right. And maybe how that can help someone that currently feels like they can't. Because if he can, like, right, let's, yeah, like for any, sure. anyone, anyone can, can right? Can start, yeah. So yeah. can you talk on that? Yes, sir. So it's just a matter of taking it slow. Like, you have to have grace on yourself. You know what I mean? Give yourself grace. You might not be able to run 10 miles. That might not be a starting point. You may be able to walk for five minutes. Well, set that goal. Each day I'm going to walk for five minutes. And that's how we deal with my brother. You know what I mean? Because like I said, initially he couldn't really. We had to move his joints for him so that he can do the different exercises. You know, like bicycles with his legs and rotating his arms. Because he couldn't do that for himself at first. So it's just a matter of taking little baby steps. All right, we're going to do this for, for three minutes. You know, see how you respond to it. Um, okay, he liking it. You know what I mean? You can tell by his response. All right, let's up it to five, you know. So taking baby steps along the journey. So anybody that's into fitness or just trying to get into fitness, set small goals. You know what I mean? And in the world of social media today, you got to have tunnel vision because, you know, we're on social media. We see these people doing these crazy things, lifting these crazy things, and you automatically – Assume you got to put yourself there. Nah, if you walk for five minutes a day, that's amazing. You know what I mean? That's that's incredible. Like I tell my clients in the gym, you don't have to lift 100 pounds. Your five pounds, if that's all you can do, is equivalent to my 100 because our body is still responding the same. So it's about just tunnel vision and, and giving yourself grace. And what what's the secret to that tunnel vision? It's so hard. It's hard. It's hard. But the secret to that tunnel vision is that word peace. Because if you're at peace, like, this is me. Like, this is myself. Like, I see them doing their thing. I see them doing their thing. But you got to be at peace with yourself. And if you're at peace with yourself, you're going to lift two pounds. You're not going to care because you getting that workout in. You accomplishing your goals. You know what I mean? However that looks for you. So you just got to have that inner peace within yourself. Yeah. So if you can find acceptance. Right, right. With yourself. You got to. You got to. It, because so often... We constantly compare ourselves to others. Absolutely. Like you're saying, what you're seeing on social media and stuff. Yeah. And then we just get stuck in this daze. Yeah, and yeah, we all go through it. I've, I've been through it, you know what I mean? Um, especially, like, growing up. I remember I tell this story to my friends now. Um, from going from middle school to high school, you know, you with your friends, everybody working out. We hit ninth grade, everybody's huge, and I'm still skinny. And I'm saying to myself, like, why am I still skinny? Like, to the point, I went home, I cried and everything. I asked my dad, like, <laughs> why am I, you feel me? Like, yeah, I'm yeah, working yeah, just yeah. as hard as them. Like, what's going on? What's here? going on? What yeah. am I missing? And then, like, one key advice that he gave me that helped me throughout the rest of my life, to be totally honest, is he was like, listen, trust the journey, and your body is going to flip when it's supposed to. And when it does, it's going to be amazing. But you just have to let your body do 
it on his own time. I said, all right. And then from that point forth, now, you know, my, my body looks decent. You know what I mean? And I'm like, all right. It flips. So people just got to let your body do what it's going to do. Don't try to force it. Don't try to, like, grow. No, no, no. Just keep working out. And your body is going to do some amazing things if you let it. But you got to let it. Yeah, that patience. Patience is key. Yeah. It, impatiently patient. You have to be <laughs> impatient enough to put in the work. Exactly. But patient enough to, to let the results. To let the results show. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That, that's a very, very difficult thing. Do you have Do you have a trick to, to patience? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> There's no secrets nah, to this you one. You just got to keep, like, everything's a muscle. Like, yeah. people got to realize everything's a workout. So I apply gym mentality to everything. Patience is a muscle. In order to get stronger in patience, you have to keep lifting patience. So you have to put yourself in positions where it forces you to be patient. Keep doing it, keep doing it. Our patience is relatively easy now because you've been working on it. So every to me, everything's a gym. Everything's a workout. Yeah, I love that. So like something that I struggle with is like uh, difficult conversations. For sure. You know, so what you're saying is you just, yeah, you know, you need more reps. Yeah, you got to have them. Yeah, you got to yeah, keep yeah. getting the you, reps in. Like, like in a gym. Next thing you know, you was lifting 135. Now you're lifting 225. Now yeah. 135 is easy. So it's just life is the same way. You have to, what you weak at, you got to put yourself in position to get stronger by just keep doing it. Yeah, and I think, you know, really uh, th this whole topic kind of goes into play with something else you mentioned the other day when we were kind of texting about what we could talk about here, which is, you know, ha having that healthy relationship with failure. Absolutely. Like knowing that, yeah, I'm going to try this. And I'm probably going to either mess up or I'm going to fail or I'm going to go backwards. For sure. But I can develop a strength Absolutely. over time by failing and failing and failing. And now my failure point, I can actually do more before I fail. I can do a little bit more, a little Absolutely. bit more, a little bit more. You know, how long did it take you to, to learn that lesson? Um, you know, very young. Like, like I said, when I started working out, um, that's what you're seeking. Like you go in the gym to seek failure. Like, you go looking for it. You know what I'm saying? If if you leave the gym and you haven't hit failure, you're disappointed, right? Mm -hmm. So um, that's how I see it. Like, you got to have a healthy relationship because in order to live, certain things got to die, right? Certain things in you have to die in order for you to live a better life. Certain qualities, characteristics, things of that nature. Same thing in the gym. Certain things have to fail before you can grow. You have to hit your arms to failure. Now they grow. You see what I'm saying? So... Failure is actually a beautiful thing. People just have to learn how to put it in perspective. Even going for goals, when you fail, you learn. You Okay, I can do this, but I can't do that. The lessons that come from failure, success can never teach. You know what I'm saying? Can you give me uh, some examples of things in your life you feel like have died? Oh, of course, of course. So, for instance, patience is one thing. Like, I'm real, like, I don't go all the time. You know what I mean? And I like to have my results immediately so when i'm setting out for business ventures or goals i'm i'm thinking like i need my results tomorrow you see what i'm saying so that particular characteristics i had to kill you know what i'm saying i had to teach myself no you gotta be patient this might take a year this might take three years it might take four years you gotta be patient so that's a characteristic quality that i had to you know what i mean master also just mastering my emotions because we're in a world where you're on the emotional roller coaster every day you know what I'm saying? So understanding, like, all right, when this type of situation happens, I might get a little emotional. You can't respond emotional. You know what I mean? You have to have your right mind. So I had to kill that part of me. You know what I mean? I had to kill that emotional side and lean on the logic side. You know what I'm saying? So different things like that within my personality, I had to allow to die off so that now I'm a stronger person individually. So when a situation happens, I can do patient. I can be patient. Or if I'm I'm working out or even a business venture, go to the left. I'm not emotional. Oh, my God, I got to try. I can sit back, think logically, and then make the next best decision. So. How does that conversation with yourself go? Bro, relax. <laughs> I gotta, you got to talk to yourself. You know what I mean? So when something happens, I, tell, I play chess a lot. You know what I mean? And I, I, I use chess, too, as a, as a life guiding tool. So in chess, you, what, three, four moves ahead. But you can never panic in chess because the worst situation that looks the worst is really not the worst. You lose your queen, a lot of people want to quit because they feel like the queen is the most powerful piece on the board. But if you actually sit back and relax, you actually in good shape because every pawn that's on the board can become a queen. 
You see what I'm saying? Mm. You can get that back. You just got to keep playing and relax. So that's how I equate life, too. I tell myself, listen, this checkers, this not checkers, this chess. Just keep making the next best move, and everything will take care of itself. Yeah, and if you're constantly getting emotional, you can't rely on that logic that the pawn can still turn into a queen. Nah, you start just throwing away pieces. Because you're just all over the place mentally. Yeah. Do you have any specific examples that where that's happened, like with you in life? Any specifics oh, of course, that you can of mention? Course. So um, pretty much, I have an engineering company. Um, so outside of fitness, you know, I got a degree in electrical engineering. So I have an engineering company. We do engineering design, like floor plans, blueprints, things of that nature. So when I first started my company, you know, everything was going lovely, right? So then we hit that one wall, disgruntled customer, and now everything is going crazy. You know, people owe money, this, that, and the third. So in that particular situation, panic wanted to set in, right? It's like, damn, I got to pay these people all this money. Um, some of the, my employees, they not working right, you know what I mean? Got to fire people. And it's in, the, it's in the midst of COVID, right? Mm. So all of this is taking place. You don't want to struggle during COVID. COVID is already enough of a struggle, right? So um, that was a situation where I had to chest mentality. All right, sit back, look at the board. You know what I mean? And I, once I looked at the board, I said, okay, all I'm really losing is, you know, a few pieces, but I have pawns in place of that that I can just put back right there and keep the game moving. Like I might lose one or two, but the game is still fine. So I literally had to tell myself that, like, sit back and think about the chess mentality and say, okay, I'm still good. And by doing that, I was able to keep my business intact. You know what I mean? Get everybody handled that need to be paid or whatever and, actually excel during COVID versus, you know what I mean, struggle. Yeah, so no matter what happens, you know, you lose you lose people. You're going to. You, you lose employees, you lose staff, right. you lose uh, customers. All of that. The game goes on. You got to keep playing. Long as we got to realize that we're the king on the board, right? So long as the king's on the board, the game will continue. But when you take the king off the board, no matter what other piece on the board, you can't play no more. So – I see myself in my life as the king on the board. So no matter what I lose, if I'm still on the board, then the game got to keep going. We got to keep playing. Yeah, there, there's still a chance there's to win. There's still a chance mm-hmm. to win. Yeah, king can take pieces too. That's you know a crazy point. Uh, yeah, by himself. Have. Yeah, a king, a king can take pieces. People don't realize that though, but a king can take pieces too. So if it's just you left on the board, and sometimes we get to that point in life, you might hit a rock bottom or a low where at this point it's just you and you. But if you realize like, I'm still the king on this board, so right now I'm going to have to, you know, bite down. and I'm going to have to fight, take some pieces until I get my pieces back. Because, again, in chess, you can get your pieces back. You know what I mean? So that's how I see it. Yeah, it's just a, it, it's a moment in time that's it. where you have to step into a role that, yeah, your main role as the king is to control the other pieces, right? Right, right? But sometimes you have to step into a role that you're not used to. But it's only for a period of time. Only for a period. It's only for a period. And that's too people gotta realize like everything is temporary. Nothing lasts forever. Things really like this is what my dad told me too. It's only gonna last as long as you want it to. You know what I mean? That's pain, that's joy, that's pleasure, that's anything. It lasts based on, you're a king. If you want the pain to last forever, don't do nothing. It'll, it'll last. But if you want it to go away, take action quick, and it'll go away. It sounds to me like the uh, – I can't think of the word right now, but the your life revolves around finding different ways to relate all these different things that you do. Yes, right? sir. You, do a, you, do, you have fitness. You have your you – know, obviously, you have, like, your clients – your and your customers, right? But then you have this engineering thing. Yes, then sir. you have chess, yeah. right? And then you also you meditate over here. How how do you keep all these things going? Do you have any tips, tricks? Um, it's just you know trying to have a routine, and I'm working on it every day. Just keeping to a routine because you know everything to me is almost like you have a company. I will give you an example. Um, so it's a company called like Dupont, Philomars, Mar- right? So a lot of people know them for cigarettes, but when you look into Philomars, they own craft. They own a whole bunch of other things underneath that one entity, but everything runs like one well-oiled machine because it's under one roof. So the chess, the gym, everything is under one roof, under one entity, which is myself. So 
It's just a matter of each day feeding into each one of those, depositing into each one of those. And it look different each day. You know, time, you might have stuff going on, but as long as you deposit into each every day, you can't lose. Yeah, so you just try to make sure that you touch on each thing. Every yeah. day. A, a little a bit will kind of push you forward. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Gotcha, exactly. gotcha. Just a little bit. You just got to put a little in. Yeah, and how? Um, and maybe this doesn't happen, but I'm assuming that at some point you miss a deposit. Oh, absolutely. How do you handle that, though? Because I think what happens with people is they miss a deposit one day, mm-hmm. everything's And over. they spiral. And the world yeah, goes. And they, and yeah, they spiral. Yeah, 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 Tell yeah. me, why does that happen? And how do we keep it from happening? So I feel like um, you have to be, and everybody hears it um, like water, right? You hear Bruce Lee say it. You hear different people say you got to be like water. But what that actually means is, like, being water, as long as it's moving, it purifies itself. The moment water stops, it becomes still, right? So in your life, being like water, as long as you stay moving, you're going to miss deposits. You're going to miss certain things. But as long as you constantly move and you're constantly purifying yourself, so you're never going to be stale. You're going to keep on going. But a lot of times, people don't have a fluid mindset. So the moment that they miss one thing, they like, oh, my gosh, I don't know what I'm going to do. So it's about being fluid. And I feel like a lot of people just, it's just something you got to work on. You know what I mean? Being fluid. A lot of people don't like going with the flow. But sometimes you have to go with the flow. You know what I mean? Because life is unpredictable. So you have your schedule, but you got to go with the flow. So like my mentor would tell me, you have to prepare for certain things to happen. So I prepare not to be able to make a deposit. I already tell myself, you may not be able to do this, but I know what I'm going to do if I can't make it. Chess, two moves ahead, right? So you have to prepare for situations so that when it happens, you're not so out of whack. A lot of people don't be prepared. They wake up and just know, I'm going to go A, B, C, D, E, and F. They just know that. But then life's like, nope, you're going to miss B and C. But if you already know, Today is what I plan to do. I might miss something, but if I do two days later, one day later, I'm going to do this to make up for that. So you have to be in a mindset that things may not go your way, and if it doesn't, fine, I'm prepared for it. Yeah, I want to play devil's advocate a little bit, and you kind of already answered, but I just want to dig a little bit deeper because a lot of people would say, confidence, I can do all of this every single day. That's how I'm going to get it done. Mm -hmm. Why do you think your way is better? Um, confidence is cool, right? And confidence, having that confidence in yourself what is the thing that's actually going to allow you to, to navigate when you do miss it, right? Mm. That confidence, uh, man, I am who I say I am. I missed that day, but I'm going to keep going because I know I can get it done. I just didn't get it done today, but tomorrow I'm going to try to knock all of them out. That's where the confidence help at. But uh, you have to have a smart confidence, right? Because... If you overload yourself, no matter how confident you are, reality is you're not going to be able to get it done. So it's about having a smart confidence, a, a, a inner confidence that, okay, boom, 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 boom. I thought I can get this done, but I am who I said I am. So tomorrow I'm going to do all in my power to make sure that yesterday don't repeat itself. Now that type of confidence will get you over the hill. I'm with it. That that makes complete sense. 100%. And I, I, as you're saying that, one thing that's really going through my mind, uh, not necessarily, you know, with, with work things and schedule things, but is w- when it comes to food, when it comes mm-hmm. to eating, I'm assuming that you're very disciplined in your, in your eating. Yeah, so yeah. there's a lot of planning going on. Semi. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd like to dig a little deeper on that, but mm. as, as you're saying, I need to know that the reality of the situation is a lot of times people really struggle with eating well. Yeah. It, it seems to be a very difficult thing, and I think it comes from a, a lack of planning and a lack of that confidence to know that I can figure it out. Right, Is right. that something that you see in, in your clients oh, a lot yeah, when it yeah. comes to like meal plans and stuff like exactly. that? Exactly, you have to um, you have to plan your meals out. But again, you have to you can't be so strict on yourself. Um, and I think that's where the disconnect is. You give a client a meal plan that's day and night from what they're used to eating. They're gonna be reluctant to do it. But if I give you a meal plan that looks similar to what you're used to doing, you're you're more like, ah, I can do that because I'm doing that already. You just added these things. So it's about um, you can't strip it all the way down. It's about baby steps. 
So when you give a person the dietary plan and baby steps, they can do it versus trying to make them do a whole complete 360 right off the bat. Yeah, and I think it's important too that going back to the relationship with failure thing, that yeah, you might mess up a little bit. Yeah, of course. And you fail a little bit and you just get back on track. Yeah, yeah. Give right? yourself grace. Like you can't be hard on yourself on this journey because fitness is a journey that is forever. You know, what I mean? it's a forever it's a journey. It's a great point. Mm-hmm. So it at no point in the journey can you you gotta you gotta give yourself grace. Because think about it, we in a world where image is everything. So the world's not gonna give you grace because everybody is image driven. So don't add to it by not giving yourself grace. You have to be that that consoler for yourself. Get yourself, oh, I missed it today. All right, but I'm going to go <clears throat> back and get it tomorrow. Yeah, enough people, uh, thir- th- third parties put enough pressure on us as is. Absolutely, yeah. Mm-hmm. So wh- why do we continue to need to put more on ourselves? It's, it's just because we're, it's a perception thing. So perception yields consequences, true or false. They still yield real consequences. So a lot of us get caught up into the perception of a thing versus the reality of a thing. So, oh, man, I got to look like this because seven people on Instagram got a million followers, and this is how they look. So I have to get there. You know what I'm saying? So now you're putting pressure on yourself that's not necessary. And I think the other big problem with that is now you pretend to be someone else. Exactly. Instead exactly. of being yourself. Instead of being yourself. Yeah, yeah. it's fine to see somebody, see their results, see their physique, and be like, man, I want to look like that's fine. Like you have something to aspire to, to shoot for. Now you got to get in your own car. Like I can't. You can drive from here to Dallas. I'm not going with you if I'm not in the car. I have to drive my own car to Dallas. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Take my own path to get there. So it's cool to look at somebody like, man, they look good. I want to look like that. But then you have to hone that in and and make it fit for you. Like your journey in there is gonna be totally different. Yeah, I'm wondering if sometimes people want to copy others' journey because they think it'll be easier. No, they do. They do. Because, you know, a lot of times struggle is never shown. You see what I'm saying? A lot of times struggle is never shown. That's Instagram. That's media. People that see certain people reach the pinnacle and think it was an instant success. Like, oh, my gosh, I just got to do this one thing because that's what they did and I'll be successful. But everybody that's successful struggled. I mean, struggle had to happen before they got there, but a lot of times it's not shown. If struggle was shown more than how they got to that destination, then people would realize, okay, I see what's required. But a lot of times people are not interested in the struggle. They just like to see the final result, and that's why they think it's one cookie-cutter way to get there. And then they think they can just yeah, copy cookie, it. Co- yeah, copy copy it, it, and then they can be there as well. Exactly. I, I feel like anytime I'm scrolling down, someone that's like um, wrapped into or involved with fitness at all, the first couple of comments you see a meal plan, calf plan, chest yeah. plan. How do you do that? How do you do that? And they're yeah. just trying to like get your plan to what's your macros? Yeah, yeah, what's your macros? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's yeah, 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 right? Yeah, 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 so it's like, yeah, um, they're just, it's like they're trying to take exactly what you do and integrated yeah. to them but it's exactly. like it's not always going to work exactly like that you know nah, it's not yeah. it's not you know what i mean yeah. everybody got a different path like fitness like i said is a journey but everybody's path is different nobody has the same path to get to that end goal and that's what people got to realize yeah i think that a lot of that comes down to different motivations like Absolutely. you know if if you didn't grow up you know seeing your brother go through this thing right, i'm sure right. you would still be an outstanding individual today Definitely. but you would be a different one. Oh yeah for sure because, and no one else experienced that right right no exactly. one else heard a doctor exactly. tell their parents exactly. that their brother wasn't going to live very long exactly but you saw that right 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 exactly. and it's going to change the the person that you become absolutely absolutely and uh, it's just it's just so interesting how we're all the same species, yeah, but yeah. we have such different, different. outlooks Absolutely. and upbringings, you know. Um, tell us how mental toughness is developed through physical focus. Um, simple, like when you're in the gym, that's one of the hardest things, but most rewarding things. So if you go in the gym and you got to push through reps, you got to push through sets, you're building mental fortitude because the only way to keep going, your physical already didn't fail. After three sets in a workout, it is no longer physical. It's, now it's mental for the rest of your workout. You, the body is like, I'm done. But you keep pushing through your sets because upstairs you're telling yourself, man, I got to finish. I got to get through this. Or I got vacation in two weeks. 
whatever your driving factor is, is all mental at that point. So that's how you develop that mental fortitude through physical focus because every day you're pushing past your physical limits and relying on your mental fortitude to get you through a workout. So, like, one of the things I do, um, I call it a Superman set. I do um, 1,000 push-ups, 400 pull-ups. And I tell somebody, come do it with me. And they'll be like, like, that's crazy. But once we get through it, like, you know, we push through it, we get through it, they feel like, damn, I just really did that. Now, just imagine the mental level that they just went to. How long does it take you to do that? Um, oh, 25, 30 minutes. 30 minutes? Yeah. Repeat what it is again? Uh, 1,000 push-ups, 400 pull-ups. All right, Sean, you ready? I'm down. I'm down. <laughs> I want to. I want to feel like Superman. <laughs> yeah. I want to feel like Superman. Yeah, we'll, we'll, tr- we'll try it this weekend. But yeah, it's so interesting um, because I often, in my own way, like we're different, right? For sure. Tell a very similar story. Um, I grew up overweight. Right. Uh, right. Losing weight changed my life. My mom died when I was young. When I was a teenager, my mom passed away. Yes, sir. Um, so I was left with my grand. I've never met my dad. So I was left with my grandparents and they both passed away very young as well, early sixties. And I was very mentally messed up, you know, as a, from fifth age 15 to like 21 probably. But the physical part of working out feel it, it led me to feeling better. And right. then I saw the mental afterwards. Right. Right. So I am a hundred percent on board for sure. With your belief that if you do the physical, mm-hmm. the mental will also come along. Absolutely. But what's so hard is when people are struggling mentally <laughs> yes, sir. to take step one. That's a fact. You that's, know, that's real. so so w- what what is the conversation? Like, I know what mine was, right? But I'm curious on, on your outlook mm-hmm. that I can have with myself. I'm struggling mentally. Things are tough. I, I hear you. I, I see you sitting here, you know, mm. sleeves filled, like <laughs> looking good. Like, like I, what is the conversation I have with myself to take step one? Um, set small goals. Like step one could be, I'm going to go, I'm going to walk from here to the trash can. Mm-hmm. And if you start achieving small goals, that's what's going to build your mental up because now you know you can. So a lot of people set these huge goals and they look at it from a huge outlook. No, nah, just stop doing one thing or start doing just one thing. And it might take you a month, but you're just doing that one thing. That builds wins. Now that builds confidence. That builds mental confidence. Now you're like, damn, I've been doing this. I can add this to it now. So it's about small wins, small wins. You get the small wins, that's going to build your mental fortitude. It's going to build your confidence. And you're going to look and you're going to be adding to it day by day. So that's the key. Just start, start small. Start and then, small, yeah. Yeah, and I'll add to that, like the account, having a, an accountability piece absolutely from someone else. You have to. Seems to be the other big part. Doing to. something that you feel is achievable, like you said, big goals, if it's too much, like if you tell, like, yeah, I mean, if you're oh, very overweight and it's been a long time since you did anything, you're going to have a really hard time running a mile. Absolutely. Right? So don't say that you're going to. Absolutely. Right? Walk to the... Trash can, like you said, like you said, you know, but then also at the end of the day, we want to be accountable to ourselves. Right, right, right. Right. But if you're struggling mentally, the likelihood of you doing that, and I'm not talking down on anyone. That's a fact. It is very slim, though, that you're going to be accountable to yourself. No, that's a fact. You need people around you um, to help. Like my brother, um, having a good family around him, good friends around him that helped his healing as well. So when you're on your fitness journey, you have to surround yourself with people that's going to push you, people that's, that's like-minded and that want to excel because then you have no other choice but to. Does it ever get easier? No. No, it's never easy. How do you deal with that? Um, you got to accept it. You know, it's a, part of the, it's a part of the journey. It's a part of the process. Um, it's never easy, though. It, it, it won't get harder, but it won't get easy. That's... That is some great advice. It won't ever get harder. Nah. So just do it. Just do it. And it'll... Right. It, it may get a little easier, I guess, yeah. but it for sure won't get harder. No, nah, it's not going to get harder. It won't get harder. And that's what people don't realize. Once you once you reach um, whatever that physical peak is for you, it's not going to get harder. But it's just not going to be easy. But you don't want nothing easy. 
You know what I mean? You don't want it easy. You want to struggle a little bit because that's the only way you appreciate it. So I guarantee you, if if we can go in the gym, curl two weights, and look amazing, we would take working out for granted. We would take it for granted, and then we'll stop. Like you go six years without it because you know all I got to do is just do just, that. Yeah, but if you had to, weights. right? Mm-hmm. But if you had to go in there, you had to sweat, you had to work hard, you put the hours in, you sore. When you wake up and look how you want to look. You're not gonna want to go backwards because you knew everything that you put in to get to that point. So that's where it's not gonna get harder because you're gonna keep that momentum. And then the easier part is like it's not gonna get easier because you're always gonna be sore. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You're always gonna be tired. You are, certain things you you always gonna go through, but you know that as long as I keep motion, it's not gonna get but so hard. Results are motivating. Results are everything. Right, and so the first time you see a difference, and then someone else tells you about them also, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Now you really start to get motivated, oh, right? Man, your car's got gas now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then the mental part, I think, third party recognition. Oh yeah, is a huge piece of this equation, right? Absolutely. So if you're struggling, if you're listening to this and you're struggling mentally to get started on something, walk to the trash can, then exactly. walk to the front door, then walk to the street. Then walk to the end of the block exactly. and then maybe jog, right? Exactly. And you build it up. Someone's going to notice. Someone's going to notice and they're going to tell you, hey, man, I see you been walking to the trash can. It's like your 10th day, man. Keep it yeah, up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. And Keep then it. your mental starts to come around a little bit. Oh, man. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. And, and your confidence in yourself. You're like, oh, my gosh, look at me now. Exactly. Maybe I could run a mile. And you might try. After that, you get a few few compliments. You're going to be like, oh, let me go hit the track. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's why it's important for, for like us that's, you know, whether we're trainers, um, influencers, whatever that is, it's important for us to be the light to people's darkness in the fitness world. It's nothing out your day if you're in the gym and you see somebody struggling, they working. It's like, man, you look good. Keep working. Like I do that because I know that if somebody did that to me, how I would feel, I would feel amazing. Um, so when I'm in the gym or I'm driving my car and I see somebody running, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I shout out to him and do your thing. Keep going because us that's you no know, already might have reached a certain level. It's that's how you give back too. like people talk about giving back or reaching back. The one of the greatest things you can do is if you're a man or a woman that's in tip top shape, you look amazing and you go tell that person that that may not look that great, but they trying Hey, you look good. You doing it. Keep trying. That's going to take them to the moon. You see what I'm saying? Yes. So us as influencers, trainers, or whatever we may be, we have to be people's light in that fitness darkness to let them know, no, keep going. You look good. 100%. Tra- if you're a trainer listening to this and you hear this yet, it, it, someone should not have to pay you for you to help nah, them. No, nah, no. Nah. Right? And I think that is a terrible part of our industry right now. Right. I think there is a lot of that kind of stuff going mm. on. Uh, I, I don't know if it's they're just caught up in themselves, right? right. right? Uh, you know, they do get so many compliments and maybe it gets to your head a little right. bit. But I think it's very important. And I've not really spoken on this very much, but I think about it a lot. We in the fitness community, no matter what, if you're a runner, you're a CrossFit, we talked <laughs> this earlier, right? A bodybuilder, strongman, yeah. cyclist, doesn't matter. We are all in fitness to be better. That's it. Right? Absolutely. And we need to support each other. Absolutely. And make everyone better. Our goal, the reason people get into the fitness industry is to help someone. That's it, yeah. And at the end of the day, the goal is to make our nation, America, like here we're focused on Houston, right? Because right. Houston, Houston yeah. needs help first, right? <laughs> but then we can spread it out, you know, sure. all the whole the whole country, right? For the sure. world, Absolutely. to make it a healthier world. Yeah. Yeah, a healthier world is a happier world. A yeah. Lot people, a lot of people ain't happy because they're just not healthy. Some part of their life is just not healthy. It might not be physical. It may be mental. It may be spiritual. But something, a part of them is not healthy, and that's why they're upset. So, like, what you said is key. Making, you know what I mean, the world that we're in a healthier place, it'd be a happier place. Yeah, you said it earlier when it comes to, you know, health. It's not only physical. It's mental, spiritual, the peace part, right? Exactly. All, all of this stuff comes together to sure. define Health. Look how many people are in tip top shape and they're right. struggling. And they're struggling in other places. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And we want to make sure that doesn't happen to anyone. We want this world to be a better place. For sure. You know, healthier, fitter, 
uh, more positive, all those good stuff. What's next for you, man? You got a lot of stuff going on. What's what's oh, going yeah. on next? What? So, um, you know, just I got a few competitions coming up, um, calisthenic competitions as well as bodybuilding. So um, next couple of months, we're going to be doing that. Uh, I got my fitness app and my one-on-one training. So I do have a gym um, in Richmond. Uh, you know, I do my one-on-one training. So, you know, pushing that, getting that going from a fitness standpoint and just getting out, collaborating with other um, fitness um, people and just – you know, trying to spread that fitness thing and then, you know, for the engineering side, you know, moving my company along in that way, you know, getting projects and putting my stamp on the world in that way. How much of your time is split between the, those two things? Um, I would say it's probably 50-50. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think Sean had some questions about your your competitions. Yeah, right? we were kind of we were talking about it earlier. Yeah, I was doing a little bit of uh, research beforehand, and I we talked a lo- about it a little bit in the pre show. But um, setting the bar five, what? So, yeah, so yeah. I, what yeah. is that? <laughs> so that was one of the uh, calisthenics, um, I guess, competitions that yeah, you had yeah. done with uh, some guys out of uh, New York. Out of New York. So what, um, what is it? Well, I guess even. If you don't mind, sorry, I'm yeah. kind of interrupted. Calisthenics com- competition. competition, like yeah. what does that include? So even? it's like um, the person running the event, they put together a routine. So it can be a certain amount of push-ups, pull-ups, muscle-ups, and you go head-to-head with the person and see who completed um, the fastest, like whoever finished first and they win that round. Um, okay, gotcha. Yeah. All right, sorry, I kind of interrupted. So, uh, no, Sean, no. what was the question? No, you're good. Um, so I was watching it. I seen that um, you got you went into losers, and mm-hmm. after that, you went against someone in um, was it pull ups? I think yeah. in the in our um, yeah, it was pull ups and push ups. I think yeah, in the yeah. in the losers bracket. So, man, how do you keep the um, I guess stamina and like mental fortitude once you're you're there and you're like because that's a, it's a lot <laughs> what y'all were doing it, it was yeah. crazy so it's like man how do you keep the stamina going through like how do you train for a calisthenics competition I guess is my um, question uh, you just gotta do a little bit every day mm-hmm. so for me you know I do push-ups every day I do pull-ups every day mm-hmm. so when it comes to those competitions, to me, I just put myself in the mindset. I'm doing what I do. I'm, I do it every day. So, okay, I'm did, just another day in the gym. Did you have a um, like a specific? Because um, we do a little bit of running at the gym. Did you have like a certain like training block specific for this uh, competition, or were you just kind of like, oh, well, I'm just this is another day of training? Um, so for me, so it's like things like muscle ups and things like that. I had started doing them since, like, 2008, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? So mm-hmm. certain things I had already been doing. Mm-hmm. And it, I guess the term, I guess they say stay ready so you don't have to get ready. So I had already been doing hundreds and thousands of push-ups, pull-ups, muscle-ups. So then when the competitions presented themselves, it just was like, oh, I'm ready. I can do that. You okay. know what I mean? I, I had the stamina and stuff to be able to compete because I've been doing it for so long. So um, I didn't really have to change my routine. I just you know kept doing what I'm doing. And when they put the battle routines out, you know, I'll run them to make sure, you know, I'm good with them. But it's just a matter of what we was talking about, depositing every day, entering perium training, right? Mm-hmm. I do the weightlifting, but make sure I touch the calisthenics, you know, make sure I touch the cardio to make sure my gas tank is, is on point. So. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, are these new? Are these like uh, like in the past couple of years, these kind of oh, started so coming nah, out? They've been around they, a long time? They've been around a while. Oh, okay. Yeah, a long, long time. I just I just started competing in them, but okay. they've, been, they've been around for a while. Oh, yeah, interesting. You know. And when you're talking about doing all these different things, and we talked about it a little bit earlier, you know, um, with the way that you break them up. Right. But do you have like one gym session per day where you um, kind of knock out the calisthenics and so weights? I try or? to work out like twice a day. Okay. Um, so like in the morning I do my weightlifting, you know, whether that, whatever body parts for that day. And then in the evening I go back and just do period calisthenics, like everything just straight gotcha. calisthenics. Gotcha. And you're doing that for train, not only for training for yourself, but also possibly training for like right. this competition. Yeah, what, what changes when you go to do a bodybuilding competition? Um, and that's the thing people don't realize really nothing. Dang. Like, the calisthenics um, helps me mm-hmm. because it makes me lean. It makes me cut. You know what I mean? And then the weightlifting put the mass on as well. So it actually, they work hand in hand with each other. So when I'm training for a bodybuilding competition, it's still the same. I lift in the morning, do calisthenics in the evening. Do you change your diet? Diet changes, yeah, for sure, for sure. So you got to eat more, t- especially when you're doing the 
bodybuilding competition because you got to put more, you know, mass on and mm-hmm. things of that nature. So diet do change as far as the amount of food you eat, but exercise is stay the same. Stays the same. Are you competing in um, men's physique or classic? Uh, men's physique. Okay. Nice, yeah. nice, nice. How many yeah. competitions have you done in bodybuilding? Um, I did my first one um, last year. That was my very first one. So um, mm-hmm. it was fun. It was yeah? fun. Yeah. I, I placed first in, in my first competition. So what a, nice. uh, dang, that's cr- Congratulations. Yeah, congrats, what, uh, one of our staff at the gym is doing their first competition in a couple yeah. weeks. Got any words for them? Um, just have fun. Yeah. Just have fun. Because um, <laughs> once you get to the competition, you did everything you're supposed to do. So just go out there and, and have fun. Okay. I'll let them know. Definitely. Yeah. I think it's in two weeks, three weeks. Yeah. The 20th. The 20th. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so we're going to go out there and check them out. Um, seems like a tough road with the diet part. And the diet is tough. It's <laughs> yeah, tough. Yeah. It's tough. So I, I see him every day, you know, uh, you know, doing his thing with the diet. He's dedicated, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's, he's locked in. It's, it's, it's yeah, tough, but in. it's it's rewarding. You know, what I mean, just accomplish it and get through it, and um, it's, it's rewarding. Oh yeah, so, for sure. Uh, Sean, did you have any, any other questions or anything? I, I had one more question about the uh, about the battles. Um, is there any type of beef like in the in the in the calisthenics world? You know, like uh, I was uh, talking to Phil about it earlier, and I was like, I kind of want to ask him about this because I love me a good sports storyline. Like one of my favorites is the No Ma story from yeah. uh, boxing with Sugar oh, yeah, Ray Sugar and Ray um, and, uh, and Stonehands. You yes, know, sir, so yes, I was like, man, I wonder if there if there's any beef uh, in this. Like if um, you're like doing some pull ups and you're like talking shit or something. You know, yeah, so <laughs> I guess I guess the beef in the calisthenics world, every city feel like they the best. Right? Um, so, okay, so New York, they are known for pull ups and dips and bars. So you know quite naturally New York like I'm the best that you might got Maryland mm-hmm. we, they feel like they the best or Richmond we feel like we the best okay so that's where the, the where, where the, the, the where beef the, is yeah, yeah, so yeah, now yeah everybody you know talking they stuff mm-hmm. all right well we go to New York let's battle yeah you know what I'm saying so um that's where it comes from everybody feel like their city and then New York is definitely because everybody see New York as that city because that's really all you see with mm-hmm. pull-ups push-ups and dips and those things so like you know us in richmond we feel like nah, we'll go up there and smoke them yeah <laughs> you know what I mean? there you go. And we'll let them know that like yeah. we gonna come smoke y'all you know what <laughs> what I mean? so that's where the i say the healthy competition comes in. yeah i was gonna say it sounds like it's all still positive oh yeah just it's like, all yeah, love, yeah, yeah. beautiful energy and everything cool, yeah it's kind of like you know in music it's that way yeah, you know, yeah music yeah. is very yeah. uh you know, local driven, mm-hmm. you know, and so everybody thinks that their music is the best. best. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, then right. Then you get on the track and, and uh, see who's better. You battle it out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it push you to be, it push you to go hard. It push you. Like, you get up against somebody that's tough, then you like, dang, it's going to bring the best out of you. And that's what yeah. you want at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. Those, the, the competitions I was watching, I was like, man, that looks, that looks hard, man. Because after a while, you're just, I guess there's so much like lactic acid oh buildup. You're trying to do like a hundred push-ups while someone else is going as well. Yeah, yeah. And you're trying to beat them. And it's just like, dude, I need to rest. But, I whew, yeah, you know. Yeah, you got to keep <laughs> yeah. going. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, and, it, and it's respect. Like, you develop a healthy respect. It's guys that... I might have seen working out. They might have seen me working out. And like you said, we had that mindset like, nah, I'm better. They better. But once the competition is over and you see, you know what it takes to get through it. And you see the next man make it through it, whether you beat him or not, you develop a healthy respect for him because you're like, man, hey, that was good work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is harder, calis- uh, calisthenics or bodybuilding? Uh, hmm. I would say bodybuilding might be a little bit harder. I, I would, I mean, obviously I'm not professional either one, but I would just assume that is the case only because of the diet part yeah, with bodybuilding. That's like the thing, you're, 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 you're at work 24 yeah. seven when it comes to a bodybuilding competition. Yeah. So I would say bodybuilding, like you said, just cause that diet piece, man, um, two weeks out from a competition peak week. It's really my, tough. My God. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Cause you have no food in you. You depleted, no carbs. And you still got to work out. You still got to do your car. You still, that's all. Still got to work on posing and everything. Right. You got to go to work every day. You, yeah, you, you know, got yeah. your life to live. Yeah, yeah. that's a whole different um, different animal. And I developed a healthy respect. Because I was one of those, man, I, I can do bodybuilding. Hey, that's easy. Mm-hmm. Until I did it. And I said salute to everybody, man, <laughs> woman, that does this. Because it is tough. It's tough. 
It is tough. Do you have goals within bodybuilding, like a pro card or anything? Yeah, that's the plan. That's your plan. Um, this year, get my pro card in the two of the uh, NPC, o, o, um, OCB. Go get my pro card in there. And um, that's that's pretty much this. Yeah, man. Well, best of luck. We'll be we'll be rooting for you. For, for sure. sure. For sure. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. I, we appreciate you coming on. You know, a um, lot, of, lot of nuggets today. We'll listen back to this and uh, a lot of gold, a lot of good stuff. Sure. Um, shout out where uh, you know people can find you, hire you as a, as their coach and things definitely, like that. Definitely, um, I'm on Instagram ish the Black Superman on Instagram. You can go there, uh, follow me. Link in my bio. Um, you can sign up for my one on one training online. And if you're in my city in Richmond, then um, you can you know, get the one on one training. So yeah, definitely follow me on Instagram and then TikTok. Um, real underscore ish for life. Follow me on TikTok as well. And um, hit me up. We get some work. Yeah. Last question. Where where the nickname come from? Um. So I was in the gym. I was working out, and then like first one person came and said, "Man, you look like the Black Superman." <laughs> I was like, "Okay, appreciate it." <laughs> then it just people just kept saying it, like, "Bro, you look like the Black Superman." So, cause I just I only had Instagram for about a year, so um, I kept hearing it, and I was like, "All right, that's it." I wanted to make that my Instagram. Nice, the Black Superman. So it just kind of stuck. Yeah, I love it. I love it. All right, guys. Well, um, you know, check out Ish Online. If you have questions, if you're here in Houston, obviously we can help you out. If you're up where he's from, he can help you out. And actually, sure. anywhere you're at, Absolutely. he can help you out Absolutely. from an online perspective, right? Got, yes, a, got an app, one-on-one sure. -on -one online coaching. Definitely. So make sure you hit him up, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Right. Peace out. Peace.